and describe the functions operating systems manage. Classify types of operating systems. Describe operating system generations. And describe the history of Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and Chrome OS operating systems. Operating systems provide standardized backbone code for managing input, output, processing, and storage. These efforts help keep data error free and mitigate data loss. Operating systems can have more than one environment. The first environment, the Command Line Interface, or CLI, is an environment where the user can type commands. The second environment is known as a Graphical User Interface, or a Graphic Shell. These environments provide menus, links, buttons, and fields that help users manage the operating system. History groups operating systems into four generations. The first generation was from 1945 to 1955. The second generation happened from 1955 to 1965. The third generation lasted 15 years from 1965 to 1980. And 1980 ushered in the fourth and current generation. During the first generation of modern computing from 1945 to 1955, operating systems that worked for multiple computers did not yet exist. Each computer's parameters were uniquely created for every job or task using machine language. However, some of the code developed during this era became the basis for future operating systems. During the second generation of operating systems, mainframe computers became available for commercial and scientific use. Tape drives, a relatively new invention, provided input and output storage. In 1956, General Motors Research produced the first single-stream batch operating system, notably for its IBM 704 computing system. Subsequently, IBM became the first company to create operating systems to accompany computers. Embedded operating systems developed in the early 1960s and still in use focus on a single task, providing split-second response times, also known as low latency. In case of a system error, these operating systems can restart where the task needs to resume. Real-time operating systems are a type of embedded operating system. Airplanes, air traffic control systems, and space exploration were among the first to use real-time operating systems. As time passed, satellite systems, robotics, and even our cars implemented real-time operating systems. Then, during the third generation of operating system development, additional companies began creating batch file operating systems specifically for their large computing needs. This generation of operating systems saw the development of network operating systems that provided scalable, fast, accurate, and secure network traffic and communications, and enabled each workstation within the network to operate independently. In 1969, the Unix operating system offered a new innovation, an operating system that was installable on multiple computer systems and featured processor time-sharing. Processor time-sharing enabled multiple users with different programs to interact nearly simultaneously with a central computer, such as a mainframe. The fourth and current generation of operating systems brought computing into a new age with multitasking operating systems, including Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and Chrome OS operating systems that enable computers to perform multiple complex tasks simultaneously. Mobile operating systems, including Android, Windows, iOS, and Chrome OS, which is also considered a mobile operating system, fit the definition of multitasking operating systems. Let's learn more about some of these operating systems. In 1991, Linus Torvalds created a small open-source operating system for a PC, releasing version 1.0 of Linux in 1994. In 1996, the version 2.0 release, with support for Network-Based Symmetric Multiprocessing, or SMP, provided a serious technical benefit for commercial and scientific data processing, evolving Linux into a powerful network and server operating system. Throughout the next 10 years, Linux gained market acceptance and its distributions continued to mature. In 2013, Google's Linux-based mobile operating system, Android, took 75% of the market share. 
When evaluating the value of Linux, consider that in 2018, IBM acquired Red Hat for $34 billion U.S. dollars. The operating systems PC-DOS and MS-DOS once existed, with MS-DOS launching in 1981. In 1985, Windows offered the consumer market a graphical user interface version of the Windows operating system, written in variations of C language. In 1995, the debut of Windows 95 catapulted Microsoft's dominance in the consumer operating system software market, with Microsoft holding about 70% of the consumer desktop operating system market share in 2021. Microsoft also offers network, server management, mobile, and phone operating systems. Apple, with its OS X and Mac OS based on Unix, began its foray into the operating system market in 1999 with PowerPC-based Macs. In 2006, Apple began selling Macs using Intel Core processors. In 2020, Apple began the Apple Silicon chip transition using self-designed 64-bit ARM-based Apple M1 processors on new Mac computers. Apple also offers the iOS operating system for its tablet and smartphone devices. In 2011, Google debuted Chrome OS built atop Linux. Chrome OS offers a lightweight operating system for mobile devices, including laptops. Laptops and tablets running Chrome OS require less local storage and cost less, making them ideal for students, and this operating system is currently used by about 10% of the laptop market. In this video, you learned that operating systems provide standardized code that eliminates the need to manually recreate all the possible code necessary for input, processing, output, and storage for every computer action. In 1956, GM Research created the first operating system that is also credited as being the first single-stream batch operating system. Linux evolved into a powerful operating system for networks and servers. With the creation of Windows 95, Microsoft began its domination of the consumer operating system market. And Chrome OS, built on top of Linux, is a lightweight, primarily browser-based operating system. Welcome to Getting Started with Microsoft Windows 10. After watching this video, you will be able to identify four Windows login methods, describe how to use the Windows desktop, explain how to find the Settings app, explain how to resize Windows and switch programs, and identify Windows keyboard shortcut commands. Microsoft Windows 10 provides four easy methods to log into a machine. You can log in using a PIN, a password, by drawing over a photo that you previously set up, or by scanning the fingerprint that you previously paired with the computer. Next, let's check out parts of the Windows desktop. Click the Windows icon to view the Start menu and Productivity pane. On the left side of the Start menu, you can see which user is logged on and shortcuts to documents, pictures, settings, and power management options. Available programs are organized alphabetically. If you right-click a program's icon, you can see menu options to uninstall the program, pin the program to your taskbar, run the program with administrator rights, and open its file location. To the right of the Start menu is the Productivity pane, which consists of a mixture of live and static tiles. Static tiles are shortcuts to favorite and frequently used programs, and live tiles provide a quick view of information, such as news, weather, and sports. Right-click any tile to remove the tile, uninstall the program, or perform other tasks. At the bottom of the screen, the Windows taskbar provides access to the Windows Start button, where you can open the Start menu. Next is the Taskbar search box, where you can search for files, settings, and programs on the computer, or perform a quick web search. The circle icon provides a shortcut to talk to Cortana, and the film strip icon provides access to Windows Task View. Next, access File Explorer. Settings lets you access an app that customizes the toolbar. On the right side of the taskbar, you can see the current weather, 
an upward carrot that you can click to display the news, the Windows Meet Now icon that opens a video conferencing program, access to OneDrive, shortcuts to Wi-Fi and wired network access, speaker volume settings, time and date settings, and notifications. When you have time, explore taskbar customizations by using the Settings app, selecting Personalization, and selecting Taskbar. Notifications are a convenient way to view the news you want to see, receive app notifications, and more. On the taskbar, click the Notifications icon to display your notifications. Click Manage Notifications to customize the notifications you see. Clicking Manage Notifications opens Notifications and Actions, which is located within the Settings app. Here you can set notification preferences, including getting app and vendor notifications, showing notifications on the lock screen, allowing notifications to play sounds, and other settings. Next, let's learn about the control buttons used to resize, maximize, and minimize windows on the desktop. To resize a window, hover over the edge of the window to display the double-headed arrow. Then, drag the double-headed arrow to resize the window. You can quickly maximize a window by clicking the rectangle. And if you need to minimize the window, click the underscore button. To close a window, click the X. You'll see the X shaded in red to remind you that you are about to close an active window. Now, you can quickly locate and switch windows by pressing the Alt and Tab keys. Your screen will display windows using a carousel format. Keep the Alt key pressed and repeatedly press the Tab key each time you want to switch to the next window. Then, click and hold to display the selected window. Let's check out more keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts save valuable time and reduce errors, resulting in productivity gains to benefit the business. Windows provides numerous keyboard shortcuts, many more than are listed here. Often, new users become confused when they see the first key and the second key with a plus sign in between, so we've shown them here as the first key, the second key, and, if needed, the third key. To copy your file or content, press Ctrl-C. To paste or insert a file or content, press Ctrl-V. To delete a file or delete content, press Ctrl-D. To repeat an action, such as inserting rows or columns, or a series of words, press Ctrl-Y. To undo the previous action, press Ctrl-Z. To edit the file name, press Ctrl-O. To restart the computer, press Ctrl, Alt, and Delete. And to capture a screen image, you can use the print screen button displayed as PRTSCR or the Windows Start key and the print screen button. In this video, you learned that you can log in to Windows using a PIN or a password by drawing over a photo that you previously set up or by scanning your fingerprint. The Start menu provides shortcuts to documents, pictures, settings, and power management options. If notifications are interrupting your workflow, open the Notifications panel, click Manage Notifications, and then turn off notifications. To resize a window, hover over the edge of the window to display the double-headed arrow, then drag the double-headed arrow to resize the window. Using the Alt and Tab keys is a fast way to locate an open window that you're not currently viewing. And finally, Windows keyboard shortcuts save you valuable time performing frequent tasks. Hello and welcome to using your Windows Lab workspace. We're excited for you to take these next steps in your skills journey. The labs in this course and other courses provide you with a virtual, hands-on lab environment where you can boost your skills by practicing what you've learned in your course videos and readings. Your lab space, also known as a guided project or the MyCloud workspace window, contains all the software you need to successfully complete your lab tasks. You'll also open a lab instructions file. For your best experience, we recommend displaying your lab space and instructions side by side. To access your hands-on lab, first open the item in the course for the hands-on lab. If the lab instructions display in a new tab, hover over the tab and pull the tab down onto the desktop. 
you can drag the window edges to resize the window to about one-third of the screen size. You'll return to this window later. Return to the course screen and scroll through the displayed course lab instructions. Select the checkbox to accept the Coursera on our code conditions. Then click the Open Tool button. Next, you'll see the Coursera Guided Project window. This window may take a moment to display. The displayed MyCloud Workspace window is divided into two panes. The left pane is named the Cloud Workspace window, and the right pane is named the Instructions window. You won't use this Instructions window. Now, you can expand the Cloud Workspace pane on your screen's left side using one of two methods. Drag the vertical slider between the Cloud Workspace and the Instructions pane to the far right side of the screen, or click the Expand Cloud Workspace window button displayed on the top right of the left pane. Take a moment to view your lab window. You can click the Lab Window Resolution drop-down arrow to adjust the size of the on-screen icons in the Cloud Workspace. And next, let's adjust your browser windows to see your Cloud Workspace and Lab instructions side by side. On the Cloud Workspace Lab window, hover over the double box icon located in the top right of the browser window to reduce the size of your window. Move the window to the left side of the screen. Now, drag the window's right edge so that the Cloud Workspace Lab window uses about two-thirds of the available desktop space. Next, select the browser window that displays your lab instructions. Drag the Instructions window so that the window is to the right of the Cloud Workspace Lab window. Now, you can perform the lab tasks in the Cloud Workspace window while using the lab instructions. After completing the lab, select Leave Session to close the Cloud Workspace window, then close your lab instructions using the option available for your browser. Also, before you begin, here's some extra information you need to know. Each time you connect to these labs, Coursera creates a fresh new environment. Data or files you saved in a previous session are no longer available. To avoid losing your data, plan to complete your lab tasks in a single session. These labs are time to provide enough time to complete lab tasks, but if you leave the lab session unattended, your lab may time out or end. Now, these setup instructions used a Chrome browser within Microsoft Windows 10. Other browsers and web browsers on Mac or Linux computers may use different navigation. You're now lab ready. Let's get started. Welcome to Identify Hardware Components and Peripherals. After watching this video, you will be able to explain the difference between internal and external components, describe what a peripheral device is and what it does, and apply your learning to contrast, an interface, a port, and a connector. What is a computer component? It's a physical part needed for computer functioning, also called hardware and each component performs a specific task. Components can be internal or external. External components connect via ports, which are openings on the sides of a computer. Without a given component, such as a CPU, a computer system cannot function as desired. An internal component is a piece of hardware inside the computer. Examples include random access memory or RAM, which is the computer's working memory and is temporary, storing items you are working with as long as the power is on. If you are working on a document and the power goes off, the document is lost. The hard drive is permanent storage that you can save a file to. A file stored on the hard drive is permanently stored and will not be lost if the power fails. And the CPU does all the math calculations in a computer. It's often called the brain of the computer. The faster the CPU, the more things the computer can do at a given time. A peripheral is a device which connects to a computer to provide extra functionality. It is used in the transfer of data to or from a computer. Peripherals can be easily connected to and removed from a computer system. Peripherals attach to the computer through a connector, and the type of connector varies with the peripheral. Examples include a mouse, keyboard, and printer. There are three kinds of peripherals. Input devices, which send commands and data to the computer. 
output devices, which receive commands from the computer, and storage devices, which are a type of permanent memory for files you want to keep indefinitely. A connector is the unique end of a plug, jack, or the edge of a card that connects to a port. For example, all desktop computer expansion cards have an internal connector that allows them to connect in a slot to the motherboard. A universal serial bus, or USB connector, at the end of a cable is an example of an external connector. A connector plugs into an opening on a computer called a port. A port is the jack or receptacle for a peripheral device to plug into. Ports are standardized for each purpose. Some common ports are universal serial bus or USB ports and high-definition multimedia interface or HDMI ports. The HDMI port pictured here could be used to connect a monitor. In this video, you learned that a component of a computer is a physical part needed for computer functioning. Examples of internal components include memory and a hard drive. Examples of external components include ports and connectors. The end of a plug or cable is called a connector. Connectors fit into one specific type of opening called a port. And a peripheral device can connect externally or internally. Hello and welcome to Input and Pointing Devices. After watching this video, you will be able to compare input devices, identify which devices use a touchpad, and define a pointing device. A pointing device, such as a keyboard, mouse, joystick, touchpad, or trackball, is used to move the cursor on a computer screen. All pointing devices send a command in the form of data to the computer. Keyboards are used primarily to input data. Keyboards typically attach to the computer via a universal serial bus or USB port, although older machines may use an IBM Personal System 2 PS2 port. To add a new keyboard layout on Windows 10, use these steps. Open Settings, select Time and Language, select Language. Under the Preferred Languages section, select the default language. Select the Options button. Under the Keyboard section, select the Add a Keyboard button, and select the new keyboard layout you want to use. You can repeat these steps to add even more layouts. The most used input device, used primarily to input data and move the cursor, is the mouse. A mouse generally connects to a computer via a USB port, which is a wired connection. You can also connect a mouse via a wireless Bluetooth connection. You can change the mouse settings, such as the size of the cursor in Windows settings. Touchpads are most often used on laptops. Touchpads are built into laptops and don't need to be connected externally. However, you can purchase an external touchpad for a laptop and connect through USB or Wi-Fi. The camera is another input device that produces a digital image on the computer. A camera generally connects to a computer via a USB port, which is a wired connection. You can also connect a camera via a wireless Bluetooth connection. Cameras are typically built into laptops and don't need to be connected externally. However, you can purchase an external camera for a laptop and connect through USB or Wi-Fi. A joystick sends commands to the computer. It moves the cursor and is often used to play games. You can connect it to the computer through a USB cable or wireless Bluetooth connection. Trackballs also send commands to the computer, although they have been largely replaced by computer mice. People with mobility issues might find the trackball to be a more comfortable alternative to a mouse. A pointing device is a type of input tool. As such, you can use it to move the cursor and additional commands to the computer. A pointing stick, or stylus, is usually used on tablets. Most styluses work via capacitive technology, which is about heat and pressure. When you push the stylus onto the screen, it senses the heat and pressure and elicits a response. In this video, you learned that Input devices move the cursor and send commands to the computer. Common input devices include the keyboard, mouse, touchpad, joystick, and trackball. A touchpad acts like a mouse. It's usually built in and found on laptops. 
and a pointing device or stylus is used for navigation and to send commands. Welcome to Hard Drives. After watching this video, you will be able to identify an internal storage device, describe the characteristics of a hard drive, and apply knowledge of hard drive performance to choose the best one. A storage device is hardware that can be used to store digital data in the form of images, video, audio, and text. There are two kinds of internal storage, ROM and RAM. ROM stands for read-only memory. It is non-volatile, which means it can retain data even without power. It is used to start or boot up a computer and for permanent data storage. RAM, or random access memory, is the opposite of ROM. It is volatile or temporary storage. The hard disk drive, or HDD, is one type of internal storage device, but external hard drives exist. Hard drives are available from several vendors in both formats. Hard drive and hard disk drive, or HDD, are used interchangeably. Hard drives work by a drive head reading and writing data to magnetic platters. The 2.5-inch hard disk drive is used in notebook computers and mobile devices. They trail the 3.5-inch desktop drives in capacity. Standard hard drives for desktops run from 500 gigabytes or smaller to as large as several terabytes or TB or larger. But given the accessibility of cloud storage, the everyday user doesn't usually need a large capacity hard drive. Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, or SATA, is the most common hard drive type for modern computers, though many motherboards support Parallel Advanced Technology Attachment, or PETA drives, which are slower than SATA drives. To evaluate disk storage capacity and availability in Windows 10, on the taskbar, type This PC and press Enter. Select Open. The window for This PC displays. Then, within Devices and Drives, view the available disk space. Hard drive performance is measured by spin speed, access time, and transfer rate. Spin speed, or RPM, is how quickly the magnetic platters rotate. The platters need to spin faster to increase performance in a hard drive. So, the faster the platters spin, the better the performance of the hard drive. The two most prevalent speeds in hard disk drives, or HDDs, are 5400 rotations per minute, or RPM, and 7200 RPM. Access time refers to how quickly the hard drive can find stored data on one of the magnetic platters. Access times of fast hard disks are typically from 5 to 10 milliseconds. And the transfer rate, sometimes called media rate, is the speed at which data is transferred to and from the disk media, or actual disk platter. It is described in megabytes per second, or MBPS. Follow these steps to install an internal hard drive. First, be sure to back up your data before connecting an internal hard drive. Transfer the hard drive enclosure to the new hard drive if present. Some computers use a special enclosure to secure the hard drive. If your hard drive has an enclosure for the hard drive, remove all the screws and pull the old hard drive out. Place the new hard drive in the same enclosure and secure it. Insert your new hard drive in the hard drive slot. Then secure the hard drive using the screws that came with it. Ideally, you should use two screws on each side of the hard drive. If the hard drive is loose, it can rattle and lead to physical damage. Now, attach the drive to the motherboard using the SATA or PETA cables. SATA cables can be connected in either direction. And finally, connect the power supply to the hard drive. To configure a hard drive in Windows, you must log on as an administrator or as a member of the administrator's group. Right-click on My Computer, then select Manage, and in the console tree, select Disk Management. To customize how you view your disks and volumes in the upper and lower panes of the window, point to top or bottom on the View menu, select the view that you want to use, and make your choice of appearances. In this video, you learned that 
Hard drives are a repository for images, video, audio, and text. Hard drives are read-only memory, or ROM, which is permanent storage. Hard drives have distinct characteristics and performance measurements, such as spin rate, transfer speed, and data capacity. You should evaluate how much storage space you need before installing a new hard drive, and you should follow the correct procedure when installing a hard drive. Data should be backed up before connecting a new hard drive, and finally, hard drives can be configured in the device management window. Welcome to Optical Drives and External Storage. After watching this video, you will be able to identify how an optical drive records data, describe an external storage device, and apply knowledge of expansion devices to choose the best one for your needs. Data is written to optical devices through a laser pressing, or burning the disk. This creates recessed areas, known as pits, and raised areas, known as lands. The laser reads and writes data on the reflective surface of the disk. Single-sided disks have one recordable layer to write data to. Storage capacity is usually 4.7 gigabytes for a DVD-ROM and 700 megabytes for a CD. Double-sided disks have two layers on which to record data. They hold twice as much data as a single-layer disk. There are many types of optical drives. These include CD-ROM, CD-RW, DVD-ROM, DVD-RW, and Blu-ray, which has a data capacity of 50 gigabytes, or 50 GB. CD and DVD writers, such as CD-R and DVD-R drives, use a laser to read and write data on the disks. A solid-state drive, or SSD, uses integrated circuit assemblies to store data, typically using flash memory, and functioning as permanent secondary storage. It is also sometimes called a solid-state device, or a solid-state disk, even though SSDs lack the physical spinning disks and movable read-write heads used in hard disk drives, or HDDs, and floppy disks. An external hard drive is an excellent medium to back up and transfer files. They can store large amounts of data, including documents, spreadsheets, presentations, music, and videos. Most external hard drives connect to a computer through a USB or eSATA connection. Many draw power from the computer's USB port. External SATA, or eSATA, is a SATA connector accessible from the outside of the computer to provide a signal, but not power. If the external hard drive requires a power cord, connect it to the back of the hard drive. The end of the power cord that connects to the hard drive is usually a small round connector. Connect the other end of the power cord to a power outlet. If no power cord is required, skip to the next step. Connect the USB cable to the external hard drive and plug the other end of the USB cable into a USB port on the computer. After connecting the external hard drive to the computer, it should be recognized automatically by your computer's operating system. Your computer should find and install any necessary drivers. In Windows, File Explorer may automatically open, displaying the contents of the external hard drive. If File Explorer does not automatically open, manually open File Explorer and locate the drive. An expansion drive provides extra storage for an ever-growing collection of files. It typically attaches to the computer with a USB connection. Expansion drives consolidate files into a single location and freeze computer space. The drive is automatically recognized by the Windows operating system, so there's no software to install or configure. One example of an expansion drive is a USB or thumb drive. These drives have a storage capacity of up to 2 terabytes or 2 TB. A USB flash drive is an expansion device that includes flash memory with an integrated USB interface. It is typically removable, rewritable, and much smaller than an optical disk. Most weigh less than one ounce. Since first appearing on the market in late 2000, as with virtually all other computer memory devices, storage capacities have risen while prices have dropped. 
as of 2018, two terabyte flash drives were the largest available in terms of storage capacity. Some are thought to last 10 to 100 years under normal circumstances or shelf storage time. A memory card is used to store digital information, typically using flash memory. These are commonly used in portable devices, such as digital cameras, cell phones, laptop computers, and portable media players. The card is stored inside a device. This differs it from USB drives. Memory cards are available in both secure digital, or SD, and microsecure digital, or MSD formats. Common digital capacities are 32GB, 64GB, and 128GB. Some of the latest generation memory cards offer 512GB memory card capacities. Portable media players and smartphones are other types of storage devices. A portable media player is any type of electronic device that is capable of handling digital media. Depending on the device, the types of media files that can be played include digital music, audiobooks, and video. A mobile media player is often part of a smartphone. It is important to understand the difference between internal and external or expandable memory. Internal memory is the manufacturer-installed storage space usually 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes, where the operating system, pre-installed apps, and other system software are installed. The total amount of internal storage cannot be increased or decreased by the user. So if your phone has only 16 gigabytes of internal storage and no expansion slot, this is all the storage space you will ever have. And remember, some of this will already be used up by the system software. External or expandable memory refers to a removable micro SD card or similar format, but not all phones will have this extra storage capability included. If storage for music, images, or other user added files is important to you, the ability to add another 32 gigabyte or even 64 gigabyte card should be an important consideration. In this video, you learned that Optical drives record data using a laser on a reflective disk. An external storage device, such as an external hard drive, often connects to a computer via a universal serial bus or USB connection. External hard drives and USB drives are solid state, which means they've got no moving parts. They're faster and more expensive than traditional hard drives. The best storage option for you will depend on your needs and your budget. Smartphones and media players offer portable storage as well as extensive functionality. And solid-state drive or SSD media, such as external hard drives, USB drives, and memory cards, increase the storage capacity of a system. Welcome to Display Devices. After watching this video, you will be able to define and identify types of display devices, enumerate how to adjust display properties, and identify the installation and removal of display devices. A display device is a hardware component for the output of information in visual form. Visually impaired people can choose a tactile monitor that presents the information in a fingertip readable format. Common applications for display devices are television sets and computer monitors. A cathode ray tube, or CRT monitor, is an analog device that creates an image on the screen by directing three electron beams over millions of phosphor dots to light them up. CRT monitors were commonly used in televisions and computer monitors throughout the mid to late 1900s. By 1990, IBM's Extended Graphics Array, or XGA display, boasted 16.8 million colors in 800 by 600 pixel resolution. Flat screens are also known as liquid crystal display, LCD, or thin film transitor, TFT monitors. A digital signal drives the color value of each picture element or pixel. They replace the larger and heavier analog CRT monitors. Touch screens use a touch panel on an electronic display. Their capacitive technology measures heat and pressure. 
They are often found on smartphones, laptops, and tablets. Projectors are output devices that can take images from a computer and display them on a screen, wall, or other surface. The surface projected onto is usually large, flat, and lightly colored, such as a wall or whiteboard. The projected images are either still, like slides, or moving pictures. Screen resolution refers to the clarity of the text and images displayed on your screen. At higher resolutions, such as 1600 by 1200 pixels, items appear sharper. Older CRT monitors generally display a lower resolution of only 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 pixels. You can change your screen resolution by selecting Settings, then System, and then Display. Windows uses plug-and-play installation. Windows locates and installs a device driver when you connect the device. Hot swappable devices, such as monitors, do not require a system restart to connect or disconnect. If you need to manually install a driver, locate the driver setup program from the vendor's website and then download and run it. To enable your PC to recognize multiple monitors in Windows 10, make sure your cables are connected properly to the monitors, press Windows key plus P, and select a display option. Your choices include duplicate, this will copy your display to both monitors, or extend, and this will project your display equally over two monitors. To uninstall a device in Windows, launch Device Manager by selecting the Start button typing Device Manager and pressing Enter. Then follow these steps. Open the View menu and select Show Hidden Devices. Expand the node that represents the type of device you want to uninstall, then right-click the device you want to uninstall and select Uninstall. In the Confirm Device Removal dialog box, if you wish to remove the driver package in addition to uninstalling the device, select the Delete the Driver software for this device option. When ready to complete the operation, select OK. With some devices, if the device is still plugged in when it is uninstalled, the device might continue to function until the system has been restarted. In this video, you learned that a display device is a hardware component for the output of information. Types of display devices include flat screen and CRT monitors. The display resolution can be adjusted by using Device Manager. To install a plug-and-play display device, you need only attach it to the computer. And to remove a display device, use Device Manager to uninstall it. Hello and welcome to Printers and Scanners. After watching this video, you will be able to Describe what an output device does install a printer in Windows, and identify types of printers used by a computer. Input to the computer is processed as data and shown or output via an output device. An output device is any piece of hardware that converts information into a human-readable form. That output can be text, graphics, tactile, audio, or video. Examples of output devices include monitors, printers, speakers, headphones, and projectors, as well as GPS devices, sound cards, video cards, optical mark readers, and braille readers. A speech synthesizer produces verbal output like human speech. A computer can function without an output device. However, without an output device, there is no way to determine what the computer is doing. There is no indicator of errors nor the need for additional input. For example, if you detach your monitor from your computer, the computer will still function, but you won't be able to see anything. A printer is simply a machine for putting text or pictures onto paper. There are four main types, laser, LED, inkjet, and thermal. Laser or thermal printers use a heated unit to fuse ink onto paper. LED printers, like laser printers, have a photoreceptive drum that surfaces positively charged with static electricity by a high-voltage wire. The paper then passes between two heated rollers, fusing the toner to the page before it comes out the printer. Inkjet printers have a print head containing thousands of tiny holes. These openings put microscopic droplets of ink onto paper very quickly. 
Inkjet machines use a liquid ink produced by either a colored dye or a liquid that contains solid pigments. And thermal printers heat specially coated paper to turn sections black and is used in point-of-sale terminals and fax machines. A networked printer is connected to a network using Ethernet or Wi-Fi, the latter being the more popular choice. Whereas a local printer would be cabled to the device that requires it, a networked printer can be accessed by multiple devices simultaneously on the same network. An IP-based printer is part of an IP network. It often refers to Unix computers that use a specific protocol for printing. Like an IP-based printer, a web-based printer can receive documents through a network and via the internet, rather than a direct connection to a computer. To install or add a local printer using Windows, follow these steps. Select the Start button, then select Settings. Then choose Devices and select Printers and Scanners. Select Add a Printer or Scanner. Wait for it to find nearby printers. Then choose the one you want to use and select Add Device. An image scanner or scanner optically scans images, printed text, or an object and converts it from an analog format to a digital image. This creates an electronic version of the document that can be viewed on a monitor or screen and edited on a computer. Commonly used in offices are variations of the desktop flatbed scanner, where the document is placed on a glass window for scanning. Flatbed scanners have been replaced by multifunction devices. More on those coming up next. A fax machine is a device that is used to send documents over a telephone network. The transmissions can be between two fax machines, or between a fax machine and a computer, or an online fax service. Often the functions of a printer, scanner, and fax machine are combined in one device, known as a multifunction device, or MFD. In this video, you learned that an output device is hardware that converts information into a human-readable form. Installing a printer in Windows 10 takes only a few steps. Printer types include inkjet, LED, laser, and thermal. Output devices display data from the computer in one or more formats. Scanner output can be selected in different formats, including a PDF. And multifunction devices, or MFDs, can be used instead of standalone printers, scanners, copiers, and fax machines. Welcome to Audio and Visual Devices. After watching this video, you will be able to define audio and visual devices, explore the usage of speakers, microphones, and headphones with computers, and evaluate the usefulness of webcams. On its own, your computer can't make a sound. Digital data from audio and video files need to be turned into something that our ears can hear, and this requires specialized hardware and processing in the form of audio devices. Audio devices refer to components that reproduce, record, or process sound. This includes microphones, CD players, amplifiers, mixing consoles, effects units, and speakers. Visual devices are units capable of presenting images electronically on a screen. Typically, such devices have a display greater than 4 inches when measured diagonally. Images can be displayed on smartphones, computer monitors, and laptop computers. A computer speaker is an output hardware device. It connects to a computer to generate sound. The signal used to produce sound is created by the computer's sound card. To configure your speakers in Windows 10, Right-click the speaker icon in the taskbar's notification area or system tray and select Open Sound Settings to go straight to the Sound Settings screen. Locate the Output section on the Sound screen and in the drop-down menu labeled Choose Your Output Device, select the speakers you'd like to use as your default. A microphone, sometimes abbreviated as mic, is a hardware peripheral and input device. A microphone allows computer users to input audio into their computers. To install a new microphone using Windows 10, follow these steps. First, make sure your microphone is connected to your PC, then select Start, then Settings, System, and Sound. 
Scroll to Input, choose your input device, and select the microphone or recording device you want to use. Sometimes referred to as earphones, headphones are a hardware output device that plugs into a computer line-out or speaker port. Headphones allow you to listen to audio without disturbing the people around you. To use a headset, you must connect it by one of two means. Attach one end of the headset to an available port on a PC or link it via wireless. If you plan to use a wired connection, you might use a 3.5 millimeter jack. Older and more affordable headsets usually have the cable split at the end with two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for audio out and the other for the microphone. These connectors are green for the headset and pink for the microphone. The next option, if you plan on using a port, is to use a universal serial bus connection. USB-powered headsets offer enhanced experiences thanks to inline amps, controls, and other features that affect sound quality. Or you can use a wireless connection. Bluetooth headsets remove all the cables between the headset and your computer, allowing you to sit more comfortably without fear of creating a tangle of cables. A webcam feeds an image or video in real time to a network such as the internet. Webcams can be used during a video chat and offer a compact video recording device. Once of very low quality, modern webcams are usually high resolution with 1080p or pixels or high definition, HD. They can be built into laptops or attached using a universal serial bus or USB. Here's how to set up a webcam in Windows. Press the Windows key or click Start. Type Camera in the search box and select the Camera app. The Camera app opens and the webcam is turned on, displaying a live video of yourself on the screen. You can now adjust the webcam to center your face on the video screen. In this video, you learned that Audio and visual devices, such as webcams and speakers, add multimedia functionality to a system. The sound quality of a speaker depends on the sound card. Headsets are available in a variety of connections and sound quality. Newer webcams offer HD or 1080p quality, and such webcams are useful in video chats. Welcome to Identifying Ports and Connectors. After watching this video, you will be able to define a port and a connector, differentiate between a port and an interface, and identify common ports and connectors. Devices connect to a computer using ports and connectors. A port is a hole or a slot that receives a connector and allows a device to physically connect to a computer. A connector is the distinctive plug at the end of a cable, jack, or electronic card that can be physically plugged into a port. Each port has a unique function and accepts only the connector designed specifically to fit into it. Common examples of physical ports and connector pairs include the USB port, HDMI port, display port, and speaker port. An interface is the point of communication between two or more entities. An interface can be either hardware or software-based. Examples of hardware-based interfaces include the point where a port or card connects to the computer motherboard, the point where a peripheral device connects to the computer, or a touchscreen device that records human inputs. Software interfaces provide routes for communication between software applications, the operating system, and hardware. For example, drivers are software interfaces that enable communication between the operating system and the computer's hardware components. Let's take a deeper look and learn to identify commonly used interfaces and connectors. The Universal Serial Bus, or USB, was built by a consortium of seven companies to replace the many varieties of connectors available in the market with a common, simple-to-use, and fast standard that could be used across devices and peripherals. Since its launch in 1996, the USB connector has gone through several iterations. When USB was first launched, it supported speeds of 1.5 to 12 megabits per second. It also supported four different connector types, Type-A, Type-B, Mini-A, and Mini-B. 
USB 2 was launched in 2001 to increase data transfer speeds up to 480 megabits per second. It also added support for the Mini AB connector and introduced the Micro A, Micro B, and Micro AB connectors. The USB 3 series of updates saw speeds increase to 5 gigabits per second with USB 3.0 in 2008. The Type-C connector was launched with USB 3.1 in 2014 with speeds of 10 gigabits per second. It was made backward compatible with all versions of USB up to USB 2. USB 3.2 was released in 2017 with speeds of 20 gigabits per second. The mini connector types were discontinued in this version. USB 4, based on the Thunderbolt 3 and 4 protocol specifications, was released in 2019 and continues to be the latest and greatest version for USB devices. It supports speeds up to 40 gigabits per second over a Type-C connector. The Type-A USB port has an elongated rectangle shape with four pins and carries both data and power. It is typically used for keyboards and mice. The Type-B port is almost square with beveled outside top corners. These also have four pins and are mostly used with printers, scanners, and similar devices. Mini USB ports were introduced for use with smaller devices, such as digital cameras, mobile phones, and tablets. They have nine pins and are smaller than Type-A or B and twice as thick as micro USB ports. Micro USB ports are similar width as mini USB, but much thinner with only five pins. These were designed to replace mini ports on smaller devices. And finally, the 24 pin Type C with a reversible connector is designed to be future proof and to replace various Type A and B connectors. Thunderbolt is a commonly used hardware interface developed by Intel and Apple. It was originally marketed under the name Lightpeak but was later renamed to Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt interface is very versatile, combining data transfer, display, and power into one cable. It allows up to six peripheral devices to be connected through a daisy chain. Thunderbolt interfaces have four versions. Versions 1 and 2 use the same connectors as a mini display port or MDP. Versions 3 and 4 reuse the USB-C connector. While Thunderbolt 3 doubled the data transfer rate to 40 gigabits per second, Thunderbolt 4 has support for USB 4 protocol and data rates and dual 4K displays. It also supports Thunderbolt Alternate Hubs USB and not just daisy chaining. All Thunderbolt ports are identified using the Thunderbolt symbol to differentiate them from regular MDP and USB-C ports. Before Thunderbolt, FireWire was a popular interface on Macintosh computers and is comparable to the modern USB interface. It comes in various shapes. The 400 is a slimmer connection with one rounded side, and the faster 800 connector looks like a thicker version of the USB. FireWire ports use a serial bus architecture to transfer information one bit at a time. This makes them lighter and cheaper than parallel buses that use a number of different physical connections. FireWire interfaces have been replaced with Thunderbolt and USB interfaces on modern computers. However, users with older computers, as well as the automobile and aerospace industries, still use these ports. PS2 ports were developed by IBM for their IBM Personal System 2 series of computers and are named after them. They are round and have six pins for connectivity. These ports were specifically designed to connect the keyboard and mouse to the computer. Although the two PS2 ports look identical, they are not interchangeable and they are identified by different colors and symbols. And although the PS2 port is considered a legacy port, modern PCs may still carry them as they are preferred by gaming enthusiasts, legacy users, and industrial applications. eSATA is the most popular port to connect external storage devices, such as external hard drives, to computers. eSATA allows hot swapping, which is the replacement or addition of external devices, without stopping, shutting down, or rebooting the host system. 
Since 2008, eSATA has been upgraded to the eSATA P interface that allows for both eSATA and USB devices to be connected through the same port. eSATA has been through three main revisions, and data transfer speeds have doubled with each revision. In this video, you learned that a port is a hole or slot that receives a connector and allows a device to connect to a computer. A connector is a plug at the end of a cable, jack, or electronic card that can be physically plugged into a port. An interface is a hardware or software-based point of connection between two or more entities that enables communication. And common ports and connectors include PS2, Thunderbolt, Firewire, eSATA, and USB. Welcome to Identifying Graphic Devices. After watching this video, you will be able to describe how graphic devices operate on a computer, list characteristics of the display system, and recognize the different types of display connectors and their use. Computers communicate with a display unit, such as a computer monitor, using display cards called the Graphics Processing Unit, or GPU. Generic graphic cards are built into a computer's motherboard and are good for everyday computing requirements. Graphic-heavy tasks, such as multimedia editing and 3D gaming, require specialized high-end graphic adapters. Radeon chipsets by AMD, GeForce and NForce chipsets from NVIDIA, and other adapters from SIS, Intel, and VIA are popular products on the market. When selecting a computer display, the resolution, refresh rate, and bit or color depth all play an important part. The resolution is the number of horizontal and vertical pixels, which determines the clarity of an image or text. The refresh rate, based on how fast the screen refreshes to show a new image, governs the video playback quality while the bit depth, which describes the total number of supported colors, dictates how close the colors are to real life. Higher resolutions, refresh rate, and bit depth result in higher quality images, smoother video playback, and true color displays. The display quality is directly linked to the amount of processing power required from the graphic processing unit, or GPU. It is, of course, possible to display low-resolution images and video on a high-end display, thereby reducing the need for graphic processing power. Initial displays used cathode ray tubes, or CRTs, with a 4 by 3 screen width to height aspect ratio. These displays supported video graphic array, or VGA, standards. The earliest VGA standard supported 640 by 480 pixels with a 4-bit, 16-color display at 60 Hz. This was superseded by the SVGA standard, supporting 800 by 600 resolution and 4 or 8-bit color. The next iteration, using XGA standards, supported 1024 by 768 pixel displays, 16 or 32-bit colors, and a higher refresh rate. All of these displays used a 4 by 3 screen width to height aspect ratio. With the advent of LED technology, widescreen monitors supporting 16 by 9 aspect ratios are common. These monitors support high-end resolutions from between 1280 pixels by 720 to 1920 by 1080 for a full HD display. Larger devices use even higher resolutions, such as 3840 by 2160 for 4K or Ultra HD displays, and 7680 by 4320 for 8K displays. Different display and graphic adapters come equipped with different ports that support different connectors and cables. Sometimes the same adapter may have more than one type of connector. Each connector represents an advancement in display technology and brings its own benefits. Let's take a look at each of these in greater detail. High Definition Multimedia Interface, or HDMI, is the latest and most widely used interface for digital audio and video for televisions, Blu-ray players, computers, and other consumer electronics. 
Beyond just data transfers, HDMI also provides remote control or CEC support and digital content protection or HDCP. The HDMI connector has a proprietary 19-pin connector in three sizes. HDMI 2.1 for regular connections, HDMI mini for portable electronics such as DVD players, and the micro HDMI for GoPro action cameras, smartphones, and so on. The newer versions of HDMI offer greater bandwidth and can therefore support higher quality resolutions up to 8K. Developed by the Video Electronics Standards Association, or VISA, DisplayPort is designed to complement HDMI and offer a royalty-free alternative. It improves upon the DVI interface and is the first to use packetized data transmission. This allows DisplayPort to transmit higher bandwidths over fewer pins, thereby resulting in almost lossless data transmission. The DisplayPort connector has 20 pins, where 12 are for the main link, 3 pins for the auxiliary channel, 1 for the hot plug detection, 2 for power, and 2 additional ground pins. It can support 7 different transmission modes for progressively increasing bandwidth. Intel and Apple developed the Thunderbolt interface, and this interface remains popular on Apple computers. This versatile cable type functions both as a display and as a peripheral interface. The initial version of Thunderbolt used the Mini DP interface. Thunderbolt version 3 and the current Thunderbolt version 4 both use a USB C interface. However, it is important to know that a Thunderbolt device plugged into a standard USB C interface does not support Thunderbolt features and a USB-C cable plugged into a Thunderbolt interface does not support Thunderbolt features. Developed as an industry standard for digital video content transmission, DVI connects a video source to a display. It transmits uncompressed digital video and can support both analog and digital devices in various formats. The DVI-I interface supports integrated digital and analog equipment on the same connector while DVI-A supports only analog equipment and DVI-D supports only digital equipment. The digital connectors come in single and dual link formats where the dual link provides higher bandwidth for resolutions higher than HDTV or 1920 by 1200. This interface was very popular but has since been replaced by HDMI and Thunderbolt or DisplayPort interfaces. One of the earliest interfaces, the VGA, was developed for analog video transmission. Considering that most of the modern graphic devices handle digital content, the VGA is now considered legacy, although some PCs continue to support it. The VGA has a distinctive 15-pin array distributed into three rows. The connector can be secured to the port using screws. There are several other connectors used commonly that are worth mentioning here. Apple provides a free license for the mini display port and it can support up to 4K resolutions. So users can connect their computers to HD TVs starting from the 2010 version.